No man thinks more highly of than I do of patriotism, as well as abilities, of the very worthy gentlemen who have just addressed the house. But, the, but different men often see the same subject in different lights, and therefore I hope it will not be thought disrespectful to those gentlemen, if entertaining as I do, opinions of a character very opposed to theirs. I shall speak forth my sentiments freely and without reserve. This is no time for ceremony. The question before the house is one of awful moment to this country. For my own part, I consider it, it as nothing less than a question of freedom or slavery, and in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought be to freedom of the debate. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at the truth and fulfill the greatest responsibility which we hold to God and our country. Should I keep back my opinion at such a time, though fear of giving offense, I should consider myself as guilty of treason towards my country, and of an act of disloyalty towards the majesty of heaven, which I reserve above all other earthly kings. Mr. President, it is natural to man, from, to man to indulge in the illusions of hope. We are apt to shut our eyes against a painful truth and listen to the song of the siren till it transforms us into beasts. Is this part of what a wise man engaged in a great and arduous struggle for liberty? Are we disposed to be of those number, of those who have eyes seen not and hear of ears that hear not, the things which so nearly concern the temporal salvation? For my part, whatever anguish of spirit is caused, I am willing to know that the whole truth to know the worst and to provide for it. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I know of no other judge of the future by the past, and judging by the past, I wish to know that there has been a in conduct of the British ministry for the past ten years to justify those hopes in which the gentlemen have been pleased to solace themselves in the house. Is it insidious this smile with which our petition has been received lately? Trust it not, sir. It will provide a snare for your feet. Suffer not your yourself to be betrayed with a kiss. Ask yourself how this glory, gracious reception of our petition comports with those warlike preparations which cover our waters and darken our land. Our fleet and armies necessarily work against love and re reconciliation. Have we shown ourselves so unwilling to be reconciled that force must be called for to win back our love? Let us not deceive ourselves, sir. These are implements of war and subjugation, the last arguments to which the king resorts. I am a gentleman, sir. Which means that this martial array, if it is for the purpose not to force us into submission, can gentlemen assign any other possible motive to it? Has Great Britain and any enemy in any quarter of the world to call forward such an accumulation of navies and armies? No, sir, she has none. They are meant for us. They have been called for us. They are sent to over to bind and ruin rivet upon us those chains which the British ministry has so been forging, and what we have to oppose them. Shall we try argument? Sir, we have been trying that for the past ten years. Have we anything new to offer up in the subject? Nothing. We have held, held the subject up in every light which is capable, but it has been in vain. Shall we resort to the entreaty and humble supplication? What terms shall we find? which have not already been exhausted. Let us not, I beseech you, sir, deceive ourselves any longer. Sir, we have done this everything that we could be done to avert the storm which is coming now. We have petitioned, we have rem remonstrated, we have supplicated, we have prostrated ourselves before the throne, and we have implored in interpositions to arrest the tyrannical hands of the ministry and parliament. Our petitions have been cited, our rem instances have been additionally violated and insult, our supplications have been disregarded, and we have been spurned with contempt from the foot of the throne. In vain, after these things, may we indulge in the hope that peace and for peace and reconciliation. There is no longer any room for hope. I wish, if we wish to be free, if we mean to be per persevere and violate those instationable privileges for which we have been so long contending, if we mean not barely to abandon the noble struggle in which we have been for so long engaged, in which we have pleased, pledged ourselves not to abandon until the glorious object of our contest shall be obtained, we must fight. I repeat it, sir, we must fight. An appeal to arms and to God of a host is all that is left for us. They tell us that we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an adversary. But when shall we be stronger? Will it be next week or next year? When will it be so totally disarmed when a British guard shall be stationed in every house? Shall we gather the strength by irresolution and inaction? 
Shall we acquire the means of effectual resistance by lying supinely on our backs and hugging the delusional phantom of hope until our enemy shall have bound us hand and foot? Sir, we are not that weak. If we make a proper use of those means which the God have placed in our power, three million of people armed in the holy cause of liberty and in such a contrary country as that we possess are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinations of our nation, and who will raise friends to fight our battles for us. The battle, sir, is not to be strong fought alone. It is in the, strength, the vigilant, the active, and the brave. Besides, sir, we have no election. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. They are clanking many a uh, behead on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable and let it come. I repeat, sir, let it come. It is vain, sir, to exempt the manner. Gentlemen, may cry peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is already begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are in the field already. Why are we standing here idle? Why is it that the gentlemen you wish what they have done? Is life so dear or so precious or so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and or slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what the course of others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death.